Hey guys, what's going on? This is going to be a series on very advanced physics, okay? And because it's advanced, it's been sort of hard for me to, I wouldn't say hard, but it's been somewhat of an effort to put all this together. And so what I've decided to do is put free versions on, on YouTube. So you'll be able to see like the first five or six minutes of the videos on YouTube. But if you want the full versions, then uh, you, go into, you can go into pay my Patreon page or you can become a member here on YouTube. If you become a member here on YouTube, you will be able to gain access to full versions as well. So there'll be two sort of sources for you to access the full versions here. In particular, when we're talking about Trent-Simmons theory, uh, we are, it's going to be a little bit more expensive because the Trent-Simmons theory is quite advanced and it wasn't easy to put together. So if you want uh, topics like this, full access, you can go onto my Patreon page or you can become a member here on YouTube. Let's now get into the real topic. All right, hey guys, what's going on? Today we're gonna start talking about differential forms and eventually we're gonna take these ideas of differential forms apply them to topology and then we'll get into the application of these in Chern simmons theory. Again, this is a playlist on Chern simmons theory. So again, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, go onto my Patreon page if you want to support the channel as well. And if you want full videos, so, Chern-Simmons theory is a particularly difficult concept in physics. Uh, and so, I'm going to try my hardest here to make everything easy to understand, and I'll, but I'm not going to start from a place where I assume that you know everything that, protect, that professors would probably expect you to know already. So we're going to start uh, all the way from the beginning. So let's get into it. Today, we're going to start talking about the concept of differential forms. And it's going to take us a couple of videos to really understand these things. Uh, we're going to go over Hodge duality. We're going to go over um, the exterior derivative. We're going to go over how the exterior derivative can be applied with Hodge duality to give us all the equations in calculus and all the equations in electromagnetism. And then we'll go forward from there. We From there, we're going to talk about topology. We're going to get into homotopy. We're going to get into... Uh, uh, homology, cohomology, and all this sort of stuff as well. Okay, so we call the determinant of something, right? So the determinant of a matrix just looks like this, where we have u1, u2, v1, and v2, and it looks like this, right? So u1 times v2 minus v1 times u2. In 3D, so I'm assuming you know a little bit, say, I like about um, some calculus, some linear algebra, but I'm going to assume that you don't know a lot here, just that you've sort of been exposed to it already. In 3D, not that, it's not too difficult here as well. So we take this guy times the determinant of this matrix minus this guy times the determinant of this matrix times this guy, or plus this guy minus the determinant of this matrix. So you can see we alternate signs, and um, we have, we break this down into smaller metrics, or smaller determinants. And then we multiply all this out, we get this. In both cases, we're seeing all possible permutations of different components with the u, v, and t vectors. Pictorially, we can look at it like this. So we have our u vector, we have our v vector, and um, when we have our u and v vector, we're, again, we're just doing this in two dimensions now. Three, we could do this in three dimensions, but we're gonna gener we're, we'll generalize later. In two dimensions, we have u1 along this axis, is right here, okay? And then v2 is this one right here, Right, so we have u1 and v2, that's this area. And then u2 and v1, 2 and v1, right, so u2 is this guy right here, the purple, so purple right here, and then green right here, which is green right here. Now, I've kept everything the same size. If we take the red here, 
and put it and just put it here and the blue here and put it here at the origin. So here's the origin. Here's the origin. What's left over is this guy. This guy. So if we we can make an area out of um, this bit here and this bit here, and that's this area right here. Right, so this minus this, or the difference, if you will, between this and this, well, that's just this, right? That's the difference. It's this rectangle. Now, if we, again, I, I copy pasted this, right? I didn't change the dimensions of anything. Everything in this figure was kept to scale. And so when we superimpose the result, uh, we can see something interesting that the result fits between the point here on this vector and the point here on this vector, okay? So what we're seeing is that the determinant gives us an area, but not in, not the conventional area that we're used to seeing from the cross product. The reason here is because typically when we work with, uh, we work with a component of one of our vectors, it's usually zero. Um, when we do the cross product. So usually when we do this, if you're, if you're new to say linear algebra, um, one of these, uh, one of these vectors is going to have a component of zero. And so this is going to go away and you just get this times this, which is an area. Okay. But if it doesn't go to zero, it's still an area. It's just, it, it looks like this with respect to these two vectors. Uh, in 3D, this is a little bit harder to visualize, but you can imagine um, in 3D, we had some space, right? So X, Y, and Z. Um,